Let's go. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. I'm your host, David Horsager. Join me as I sit down with influential leaders from around the world to discuss why leaders and organizations fail, top tactics for high performance, and how you can become an even more trusted leader. Welcome to the Trusted Leader Show. It's David Horsager, and I am grateful to have a dear friend as a guest. He's running an um, incredibly high impact company today. Uh, I was actually just out there in Salt Lake City yesterday at his corporate headquarters, and we got to have a little fun too. But um, great family, great business, great team. Welcome to the show, Mr. Verl Workman. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Viral, uh, you've done some great things, but let's just jump into some things you're doing these days. This new company, uh, well, first, before we get there, actually, just tell us a couple things we don't know about Viral. The leader, CEO of Workman, uh, tell us a couple things that everybody can know about you before I jump right into how do we build high trust teams and cultures. All right. So first, I'll tell you is that uh, things I'm most proud of in my life, I'm an Eagle Scout. And I was a scoutmaster for many, many years, and I love um, molding the minds of these young people as they are at that 12 to 16 age, hiking through the mountains, you know, teaching them, you know, Zig Ziglar and Tom Hopkins and Dr. Schuler and great life principles. So those are some of my proudest moments. I'm a father. I have been married to my sweetheart for 20, for 36 years. I have six kids, nine grandkids, seven granddaughters. They all live within a couple miles of my house, and we feed them every Sunday, and they're there a lot. So those are my... Those are my greatest accomplishments is that I, I married right and that uh, my kids still like their parents. That's so fun. So you had a transition about eight years ago. You uh, had to tell us about the transition. And then on a napkin, you with your daughter kind of built out this possibility, this company. Tell us about that transition quick. And then we're going to jump into what you're up to. Yeah. So I've been in, I've been in the real estate space for a long time as a professional speaker. And I speak and train and coach real estate companies and brands and uh, I was at a conference. We had merged a company with a company out of Illinois. And I got off stage one day and I got fired. My partners fired me for no particular reason other than the other partners wanted to have more ownership. And so uh, my daughter and I were stuck in South Carolina on a flight home. And I was in the back of the plane. She was in the front. And we had a quick prayer and said, all right, let's figure this out. And in a four and a half hour flight, we built a mind map that became what would become Workman Success Systems. And it was really interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, is the you know at 50 years old to think you're going to start over is a little bit intimidating like I, I like i had a great job i was making great money i owned the company and we were in a good place in our lives and then like in a moment i was told you're not here anymore and like that like that freaked me out uh, but in that in that plane ride i guess what happened is uh, i got clarity and a piece that happened that said you know what you've been through this before you know how to build let's build something special and we built what would now become Workman Success Systems. And Workman Success now has over 100 coaches and we're work with some of the biggest brands in real estate. We develop real estate teams, high performing teams at a real high level. And I've got all three of my married kids working with me. And it's been really fun to have a business that my kids are so close to me that they actually add real value. And so we just been, it's been a great journey. We did more in the first six months in this business than I did the previous 15 years in the other one. So, uh, so and now it's happened, a multi. Right? Yeah, multi, multi, multi million dollar organization that's actually doing even more importantly, great, incredible impact for those you serve. So let's jump into that. What do you think? What what is it that makes good coaching or coaching that's transformative? How what what is that? How how do you how how does coaching actually transform people? So um, I would say that there's there's a few key elements. The first one is you have to be coachable. A lot of people will invest in a coach, but they're not really coachable. They think the coach is going to give them some magic pill and they're going to give them some brilliance that's going to change their life. And the reality is, if you're not coachable and you're not willing to do the work, it doesn't matter. So that's the first thing is that is it's more about the, per, the client than it is about the coach. And then the coach has to be, you know, our philosophy in coaching is tactical. There's a lot of people that, you know, if you put it out in the universe and you believe it and you yell affirmations in the mirror and you run around the room, that great things will happen. And I just think that most of that's bull crap. And so if you want something, you've got to figure out what activities have to happen. And I break them down to a daily basis of what those tactile activities are that give us the result that we want. And then we just execute. And so a great, a great coach has the ability to look at someone's life plan and help them create a business that supports their lifestyle that they desire. Hmm. That's interesting. 
What about, so how do you, uh, in that, I think there's something interesting that you do better than most, at least what I saw. One, you have a better track record. Number two, how do you hold people accountable? Like they're paying you, you know, but how, how do you hold people accountable to what they say? What, what works? So I'll give you two things. First is accountability is not something you do to someone. Like David, I, like I've known you for a few years now and I know that if you don't want to do something, you're not going to do it. So the whole concept of accountability is, is kind of crap. So accountability is a culture you create and it's a choice that someone makes. And so we create a culture of accountability and accountability in uh, my experience is it happens because of awareness. So I like to say that which gets measured gets done and we track the right things. And then when you're tracking the right things, you become aware of whether or not your activities are giving you the result you want. So accountability happens because of the awareness, not because I'm making you do something you don't want to do. Like, I think most people get up every day and they want to succeed, but they don't have the information to or the feedback that they need to know whether or not they should make a course correction. So accountability is awareness. And accountability is love. It's it's a culture you create, not something that you're going to do to someone. I think this is really interesting because I think, you know, going back to, uh, you know, several things, but like in our company right now, if I go outside this door, we have a, we have a, um, a dashboard up for the company. What's that? So that people can kind of see, they can see themselves. In fact, we don't, in fact, we don't have to talk about so much because we can see, hey, if you're not doing these things, it's why we're not getting these results, right? Or this impact. Right. And for me, when I was, you know, uh, losing some weight a while back, it was like, I, I measured what I ate every single day. I measured anything I put in my mouth and I was became aware, like, oh, I didn't think I did that. And then I looked at, oh, I already filled that spot. Like, I can't have another one of those or whatever it was. So it's tracking and measuring, creating accountability. How do, let's go inside your own company because you have a significant company, great team. How do you build a culture? We're all imperfect, but how do you, I, what I see is, is that they're, they're from my limited experience, but being there a, a few times and seeing what they're, 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 um, the, the horses are pulling the, 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 the sleigh, the same direction. And there's a lot of snow sometimes and it's hard, but they're working, they're going the same direction. How do you kind of create that alignment and, and high performing culture there? Because they are moving they're They're doing it even when it's hard. They're, they're running the same direction. How do you do that? I'd say first it's hard. And second, we don't always get it right. So if I, if I told you it was easy and it, we, we had this amazing thing all the time, it just wouldn't be true. You know, you have to work at it. I'd say that uh, every company has a culture that's either intentionally created or it's accidentally created. But either way, it's created. Mm -hmm. And we're very intentional about creating a culture and a place that people want to work there. You know, one of the, when you and your wife left the other day, um, that afternoon, one of my employees came in and his wife stopped by the office. And it was my graphic designer. And she just kind of stood by my door. And I finally said hi. And she said, hey, I'm Don's wife. I don't, I don't know if you remember me. And I said, oh, yeah, I, I remember you. And she says, I just want to thank you. She says, you know, Don's your age and he's never loved working at a place so much. And you really do a lot to make this a great place to work. And I just want to say thank you because he's happy. And to me, that is like, there is nothing you can say to me that would make me happier, give me more joy than the spouse of someone who works here taking time to come in and tell me they love it. So we do things like we go, we take the company to soccer games. Um, we do vision boards like, like the you know, when you're doing sales training, it's easy to teach salespeople to build a vision board to go get their goals because they have variable compensation. But when you have support staff and graphic designers and tech people, they don't get to control it as much. It was really interesting to me, David, this year that I don't know, we had eight people on their vision board say they wanted to buy homes. And we've had five of them actually buy houses this year. So by knowing that that's what they wanted, we started running classes on things like, you know, how to get out of debt and uh, what you needed to know about the real estate market and how we would help them uh, get into homes. We have one closing today. As a matter of fact, John, you met John Miller. He's yeah. closing yeah. his house today and he's so excited. So that's, wow. so culture is just, you have to decide. And it all starts by building a set of core values and the core values have to be real. They're not something you put on your wall that you hope people see and think you're great. The core values are at your core who you are and who you want to be as a company. And then how do you communicate those time. out? How do people see those or notice those? Just take one. What's an example of this core value? And this is how we make sure that's because people forget. You can say your core. Yep. On every desk, when you get hired, you get a plaque just like this. And the core values are choose to be happy, communicate openly and honestly, integrity always. 
have and share vision. You know, like I could take have and share vision. A lot of people think that it's my, the job of the CEO to have and share the vision. I believe it's my job to create a culture where everybody has and shares their vision because we have amazing people that have different life experiences. And when they share their vision, whether we use it or not, it needs to be a safe place where they share it. And then they feel appreciated. And then they come up with other ideas. And we've got some amazing things we do that I would have never thought of. I'm not that smart, but I've got some people around me that are. So those are some examples. Um, Another one we focus on uh, from a core values perspective is one of my core values is show gratitude. Now, it's one thing, you know, I've seen other people have have gratitude or gratitude's a core value. Saying thank you is very different than showing someone gratitude. And so we, in our Monday morning meetings each week, we take a core value and the company discusses it. An employee gets to talk about what that means to them. And uh, each employee kind of looks at the core values a little bit differently and internally. So showing gratitude has been interesting because whenever we talk about it, you'll see these acts of kindness happen around the office where people you know, we'll do something for someone to let them know that they appreciate them rather than just say thanks. So those are some small examples. Most training and development initiatives don't last or even solve the root problem hindering an organization. That's where TrustEdge certification comes in. TrustEdge certified partners are equipped with a suite of tools to identify, benchmark, and close gaps in trust for good. Because when you solve the real issue, you get measurable results and a culture where people actually want to make an impact. So whether you're a trainer, a manager, an HR executive, or a leader in learning and development, check out TrustEdgePlatform.com and see how you can start solving the root issue and get lasting results in your organization. And now back to the show. Loads more we could get to. Hey, uh, I know you've got a hard stop coming up. I'm going to ask you at least three more questions, so we're going to do them quick. Go for it. One. You are a sales guy. You, you know, at a young age, you sold dishes to uh, not dishes, but uh, the big uh, satellite dishes door to door. You've sold, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. You've started your own companies. What's that one sales tip for people that that how we can increase trust faster and sell more? What's a tip? Oh, this one's easy. Stop selling and start serving. We have a serve team, not a sales team. Now, don't don't mistake. I'm an aggressive closer. I mean, I eat rejection for breakfast. I get up every day and we want to sell stuff. So I love selling. But our approach to selling over the last couple of years has really changed. COVID really changed it for us. You know, we started serving and making a difference in the industry. And as a result of that, our company grew. And so now when we call someone to have a consultation about whether they should join our coaching, it's, hey, tell me where you are and what you need. And let's see if we're a fit. And I'm going to give them something during that consultation that they can use whether they sign up or not. So serve instead of sell. And it changes the nature of your interactions with people. I've noticed that people like you, great, great idea. Serve team. Stop selling, start serving. People like you that are great leaders on stage or in public or with your team tend to do some things at home or personally that keep them grounded or their habits. What's a habit or two that helps you, uh, that you do personally, that helps you lead well publicly? I read a book a week. I constantly read and I listen to books on tape. I swim laps in the pool when I'm walking on the treadmill. I've always got something playing like on my desk right now. I've got a uh, look at this book. Imagine what I'm reading now. Uh, and <laughs> like I've, I've listened to it on audible Trusted leader. And now I'm going back and I'm reading it again. Now we're applying the eight principles of trust in our, the eight pillars of trust in our own business. So now we're going through and saying, okay, so it's one thing to learn it. It's to, to listen to it. It's another thing to say, okay, that resonates with my values, but then to go implement it and do it takes another level of commitment. So I'm a doer, not a thinker about doing, I don't want to think about it. I want to do it. So now we're going to implement it. So we're going to do it. I love it. Viral Workman. Hey, we're going to share exactly where people can find out about you, your company, your website at trustedleadershow.com. You can find his LinkedIn and all the other ways to find out about Viral. Just check the box or, or check the, the show notes and find out about Viral Workman. Great leader, both of his family and of his company. And I've got one last question for you, Viral. But thanks for, the, thanks for sharing some insights with our listeners. Thanks for being a friend and a trusted leader. Last question. It's the Trusted Leader Show. Who's the leader you trust and why? 
Well, so I have several. And so besides you, David, I, I, you know, I hold you in a high level of regard and I appreciate all you do for the, for not just for me, but for the, for the world and the message you have created in trust. I think it's, it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to live it. And I appreciate the examples you set in living it. Um, if all of the books that I've read and all of the leaders that I follow, uh, the one that I, that, that I probably admire the most that's made the biggest impact on my life has been Ogmandino. And Ogmandino wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World and a bunch of Christian books. And um, the 10 principles that he teaches in The Greatest Salesman in the World have impacted me and more people as a result of the impact on me than anybody. And so uh, the reason that I look at him as a trusted leader, I don't think there's a word that he writes that I don't um, believe in and that I don't want to put into practice in my life. I mean, live each day as if it's your last. Be grateful and give thanks. Um you know, love and create great service. Like there's so many, you know, the difference between success and failure lies in a man's habits. Great habits open the door to success, bad, unlock the door to failure. So I'd say Ogmandino is the one that makes, has made one of the, one of the biggest impacts in my life. He's made a huge impact on me. I read that book as a teenager and it me impacted me. The, uh, lots of goods, but the greatest, uh, lots of good books, but the greatest salesman was incredibly powerful. Lots more we could say, Burl Workman, Thank you for being a friend. Thanks for being on the show. This has been the Trusted Leader Show. Until next time, stay trusted.